Welcome back everybody. Okay, today we're going to cover erosion and deposition. We've already covered weathering and soils, um, so this is another part of that process. Rocks that have been broken into fragments, regardless of their size, are called sediments. The mineral composition and other characteristics may be like or unlike the properties of the underlying bedrock. If the characteristics of the sediments is different from the bedrock, the sediments had to have been transported from another location. Erosion involves transporting sediments away from their place of origin to another location where they are deposited. Most forms of erosion are driven by the force of gravity. Physical and chemical weathering reduces fragments to smaller sediments, which are moved further along by agents of erosion, such as wind, water, or ice, or gravity. Running water transports sediments in several ways. Water can transport ions, which cannot be separated from the water itself. Water can transport particles in suspension called colloids. The particles in colloids are so small that when they can be filtered out, they will not settle out of solution on their own. The largest and heaviest particles are rolled or bounced along the stream bed in traction. Sediments of low density, particularly organic remains, will be carried along the surface of the water by flotation. The smallest particles in suspensions, solution, or flotation are carried along at the same velocity as the water itself. Those that are heavier and are carried in traction move more slowly than the water transporting them. The general rule of thumb is that the bigger the sediment, the faster the water has to be moving in order to transport it. Another agent of erosion is wind. It can pick up loose rock materials like sand, silt, and clay and carry them away. Wind erosion occurs mainly in dry areas such as deserts and beaches, where there is little plant life to hold the soil in place and prevent erosion. Wind can also erode by abrasion. Sand blown by the wind can break down materials on a rock surface. In areas where this type of abrasion is common, ventifacts, or angular shapes, are often formed. Windblown sand abrasion usually occurs near the ground level because sand is not often lifted more than a meter high. This process may produce mushroom-shaped rock formations like the balancing rock you see here. During the winter, in more northerly regions, some areas can receive several meters of snow. If more snow accumulates in the winter than melts in the summer, it builds up as ice. If the ice becomes thick enough, the weight of the ice will begin to be moved by the pull of gravity. The result is a glacier, or a large mass of moving ice. As the glacier moves, it carries, pushes, and drags loose rock material along. The glacier with embedded rocks acts as an enormous abrasion system, and it can, be, it can smooth, scratch, or groove bedrock. When the ice melts, unsorted rocks and boulders are left scattered around hilltops and in the sides of valleys. A continental glacier deepens and widens valleys as it moves. It grinds down the hills, leaving them polished and rounded. Valleys polished by glaciers are U-shaped, whereas the valleys carved by streams are V-shaped. A glacial cirque is a steep-sided, rounded, bowl-shaped feature carved into a mountain at the head of a glacial valley. In the cirque, Snow accumulates and eventually converts to glacier ice before heading down to the glacial valley. A horn is the sharp peak that remains after cirques have cut back into a mountain on several sides. And you can see the horn here. Sharp ridges called arites separate adjacent glacially carved valleys. The Sawtooth Mountains of Idaho offer exceptional examples of glacial, glacial erosion features such as U-shaped valleys, cirques, horns, and arites, as well as smaller features such as polished and striated bed bedrock. Redfish Lake in Stanley was also created by glaciers in Idaho. Each agent of erosion causes very specific changes to the particles or sediments that it carries. Sedimentary particles carried by a stream are usually rounded and polished as a result of being tumbled in the current. Rocks transported by glacier are usually somewhat rounded and are often scratched or gouged on a flattened surface from being dragged by the glacier. If there are rough, jagged pieces of rock at the bottom of a cliff, 
then probably only gravity was involved. As different surfaces of a wind-worn rock are exposed to wind erosion, the rock develops smooth, flat surfaces with sharp edges. The angular rocks are called ventifacts. Wind-worn rocks are also often pitted where the softer minerals have eroded away. Human technology has contributed to the erosion of the landscape. For example, construction and mining projects have moved great quantities of rock and sediment from their original locations. By destroying plant cover, poor farming and forestry practices have left soil exposed and unprotected. The exposed soil is quickly eroded by running water and wind. Okay, my dears, that concludes this lecture, and we will begin with the geologic time scale and fossil formation afterwards. Have a great day.